all-new Dr. Phil. Mom's refusing to go to her daughter's wedding. You said, I hope nothing but severe depression and heartache for you. She claims her family... My mom and my sister are rattlesnakes. ...is conspiring against her. She told your ex-husband to kill you, the children, and then himself? I wouldn't even think to make that up. She's lying through her teeth. That is a lie, Dr. Phil. Pump your brakes and let him help us. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Thank you, thank you. Well, lying, damaged, attention-seeking, sociopathic, narcissistic, rattlesnakes. Those are just a few of the choice words Kristen uses to describe her own family. So why all the venom? Well, according to Kristen, her mother Teresa and her sister Susie are so sick and twisted that they even convinced Kristen's daughter, Brittany, to file a restraining order against her. Now, according to Susie, she went so far as to stalk her, get this, with night vision goggles, <laughs> and told her ex-husband that he should kill Susie and their children and then commit suicide. Now, that got my attention because we all know that that kind of thing happens. Kristen's daughter, Brittany, is getting married, and she would love to have her mother there. Kristen says as long as her family is at the wedding, she won't be. Take a look. I am not going to my daughter's wedding at this point. Because I am humiliated, I found out about Brittany's wedding by my mother, Teresa. There was already a wedding planned, and there was already a wedding shower that I didn't even know about. I couldn't believe that Brittany excluded me. This is not my wedding. But I am her mother, and I deserve a whole lot more than what I've been given. And the mother of the bride should be respected. My mother and my sister have poisoned my daughter, Brittany, against me. My sister, Susie, is sociopathic. I know my mother is vengeful and full of hate. I feel it was my sister, Susie, sole purpose to separate my daughter, Brittany, from me. My mom and my sister are rattlesnakes. I am the scapegoat of my family. They all gang up on me. They all conspire to harm me. I feel certain my sister Susie would kill me if she had half a chance. My daughter should not want anything to do with my family who cuts my throat all the time. My sister has always influenced my daughter negatively. Brittany disrespects me and resents me. Brittany has never cussed and disrespected me like she does now. The last few times I've spoken with Brittany, she told me I was psychotic. She told me I was a mental case. I told her, F you, Brittany, drop dead, you fat whore, stay fat. Whatever I could think of that would hurt her the most, because she hurt me the most. I did give my daughter, Brittany, an ultimatum. You either choose between my sister, Susie, or me, or I'm cutting you loose. But Brittany says she doesn't need brainwashing when her mother tells her she wishes she were dead and regrets not aborting her. My mother is extremely vengeful. My mother is at war with my entire family, my grandmother, my aunt, and wants me to take her side. Anytime I don't take my mom's side, she's blowing up my phone with the most hateful text messages. You're a bitch, you're a whore, you're selfish. She said that she should have had an abortion and that she hoped that I die. I'll send her back emoji hearts when I'll say, I love you, Mom. Anytime my phone goes off more than once or twice and I see that it's her, I instantly feel like someone has kicked me as hard as they can in my stomach. She burned my baby book and ripped up my baby pictures. Growing up, my mom and I were really close. Life seemed so perfect. I have vivid memories of her being such a compassionate, loving, and caring mom. And one day, that just kind of changed. 
My mom's verbal abuse got so bad that I had to file a restraining order against her. My wedding is in a few weeks. When I first told my mom about the wedding, her first response was, will Susie be there? My mom just despises my aunt. She's mad that I'm getting married because my aunt Susie will be there. My mother told me that if I did not cancel the plans for my wedding, she was going to have me fired <laughs> from my job. My mother feels like I have hurt her so horribly, and sometimes she'll say, I pray every single day to God that you are sterile for the rest of your life and can never have children. It makes me want to cry. A person can only take so much. You say that your mom has put you in a position of making a choice, that this is a loyalty test, like you either choose me or you choose them, and there's no in-between. That's correct. Uh, is that true? I gave her an ultimatum after many years of abuse from my family mm -hmm. and disloyalty from my family and Brittany. Do you believe that your reaction to this and the way that you have reacted to your daughter in particular has been appropriate? No, I wouldn't say. I'm very ashamed of the words and the verbal abuse that I lash out with. It's reactive abuse. That still doesn't change that it's wrong. But well, but let's look at some of the statements you've made. I mean, this is just over a three-day period. I have to put my glasses on. Yeah, put those on. Uh, I just pulled out some statements of what you've said over just a three-day period. You fat bitch, I should have aborted you. Stupid hillbilly, drop dead bitch. You should have been sucked out of my belly. You little attention seeking liar. I will never meet your children. Don't ever contact me. God's gonna get you. You suck, you fat lying bitch. I hope nothing but severe depression and heartache for you. These are in writing from you. All so, those you saw in writing? Yes. Because I never said you should have been sucked out of my st I don't recall that. Well, I, I have it in writing. Okay. You did. <laughs> but we, I would like to look at my writing. phone compared to hers because they have created fake texts. There's an app for that. Dr. Phil, we have not done that. But if I said it, I promise you, most of that I'll tell you I said. <laughs> this is your daughter. I don't feel like she's my daughter anymore. I don't mean to be ugly. I love her dearly. But I, I don't... <laughs> But have you seen what comes with that before? Well, let's, you, the, the sucked out, let's look at the exchange of October 26, 2015. Kristen, blank you, bitch, fat ass. Fat includes mental health issues. Blank you, bitch, you are stupid, you'll be divorced, don't you ever contact me. You always sucked as a daughter to me. You should have been sucked out of my stomach, you ingrate. I hope nothing but severe depression and heartache for you. Brittany's response was a heart emoji. She triggers me terribly with the way she does me with my family. Okay, so the reason you do this is her fault. It's PTSD. When I'm under constant attack, I have no control. Okay, but when, when you're writing this, I'm taking every single thing, picture anything I own to do with you, to the dump today. I hate you. Okay. This, I said that. I didn't mean it. Well, I but the next day you cut up all of her baby pictures and sent them to her. No, I didn't do that. That was a year ago. I never burned well, her baby book. Okay. I never did anything well, but take it off We actually have a picture dump. of what you sent to her. Oh, I don't, okay, I did that. I didn't recall that picture. I'm not going to lie about anything. If I did it, I'll tell you. Is that appropriate? It's not appropriate, especially for my mother. I just lost it. I really, really lost it. That is not who I am. I do not want anything bad for my daughter. I have always protected her. Mm -hmm. She really hurt me when she did what she did to me. Uh, we have to take a break. Kristen says she will not attend her own daughter's wedding if her sister Susie is there. In fact, she refuses to go anywhere she is, well, except today, because Susie is here along with Kristen's mother, uh, who Kristen calls a rattlesnake. We're gonna meet them after the break because I'm gonna try and broker some kind of 
peace or detente or calm or something. We'll be right back. I have never liked Kristen. I actually don't even tell people I have a sister. The whole family avoids her because she's mean. Kristen told my ex-husband that he should kill me and then commit suicide. Kristen is vicious. And later, did you tell her you were going to video chat her during the ceremony and shoot yourself in the head? It's been said multiple times. Let's just be real. That is not <laughs> it's true. It's been said multiple times. That is times. not true. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. He claims he's a complete wreck. Dr. Phil, I'm in the ambulance right now. My chest hurts. Because of his wife. Aren't you still married to somebody else? Yes, I am. She's also dating someone else. The other man is here. The confrontation. You're disgusting, a despicable human being. And why the other man. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Was escorted off stage. All-new season of Dr. Phil. That's tomorrow. Brittany moved out of my house three years ago. I miss her terribly. I miss her so much. And being in this room is so hard. Two days before Thanksgiving, she said, Mama, I want to do something different. Brittany went behind my back and spent Thanksgiving with Susie. My daughter sent me, Happy Thanksgiving. I love you so much. Then I told her by text, all caps, you. That's what I said. And I meant it. You. Susie knows that I do not want my daughter around her. Well, Kristen's sister Susie says she would call Kristen mean, but that's an insult to mean people. Uh, she says Kristen has completely destroyed her relationship with her daughter Brittany and the rest of the family with a lifetime of verbal and emotional abuse. Now, Kristen's wow. mother Teresa says she thinks the best way to help Kristen would be if she got a lobotomy. Take wow. a look. My sister, Kristen, is very toxic, absolutely demonic. Kristen is explosive, angry all the time, paranoid. The whole family avoids her because she's mean. My sister sends horrible text messages. The last message she sent me was her telling me what a piece of parent I am. I deleted it from my phone and I blocked her number. After months and months of my sister abusing me and my children, I filed a restraining order. Six years ago, my first husband and I divorced. She told my ex-husband that she was watching my house at night, wearing night vision goggles and taking pictures. A short time later, Kristen told my ex-husband that he should kill all three of our children, kill my boyfriend, kill me, and then commit suicide. I have never liked Kristen. We have never been close sisters because Kristen is vicious. And I don't want that in my life. One time as teenagers, she attacked me with an ink pen, and it stuck in my forehead. Blood was pouring down my face. Kristen is so mean to Brittany. Brittany has a broken heart. She's scared of her mother. It's hard for me to understand how Kristen can treat Brittany the way she's treated her for 25 years. Brittany has suffered a lifetime of emotional abuse. Just recently, Kristen texted Brittany, why don't you go hide in a closet and eat a bunch of snack cakes, you fat whore? Kristen doesn't deserve to be at the wedding. I can't think of one thing that Kristen has done that makes her deserving to be the mother of the bride that day. Our relationship has been broken for so long now that I actually don't even tell people I have a sister. You're describing you on there, not me. You're a liar. You're a liar. I never have owned Dr. Phil, night this vision goggles. Explosive, Kristen. No. <laughs> okay. I'm this just telling you, they are daily. lying. I promise you. Okay, well, your sister said she got a temporary protective order against you, and you said that's a lie. She never did that. She didn't. You get said a that's temporary an absolute lie. That is a lie. We have here protective orders filed against you by your family. It's One, not a protective order, it's a Susie, stay away order. The on 9 28 12, her. the harassment via phone and social media, stalking, threats to herself and family, protective order granted between sisters for That's six not months. True. She accused me of stalking her, threatening or telling her husband to kill her and her family and then kill himself, whatever. I'm not even sure. She's saying that you're lying about this. Is, are you lying about the fact that she told your ex husband to? 
kill you, the children, and then himself? No, sir. Why would you make that up? I wouldn't even think to make something like that She's up. She's lying through it her teeth. You know, you've had a chance face. to talk. Let her talk now. It wouldn't even cross my mind that she would have ever said that, much less the thought to make that up. Mm -hmm. I never, he never, if he said that, he lied. We actually contacted him. And he gave us a statement, here's what he said. As far as interfering in my divorce with Susie, it was almost like Kristen had a vendetta against Susie. See, I, it was one thing after another. She cut the cable wires to the house. That is a lie, Dr. Phil. Camped outside the house. She even had night vision goggles. I, I, that's she a lie. She was trying to help me in the divorce by getting photos of Susie and her new boyfriend. I don't even own a camera. Later, Kristen said, I should kill Susie, my kids, and then myself. She said it would make the world a better place. Obviously, I didn't. Kristen is a unique individual. You think there's no way people really act like this. Well, they do. They absolutely do. Listen, so I promise what he said. you to God, I swear on the Bible, that is total lies. This is it. This is it. <laughs> I mean, this okay. is okay. it. <laughs> Dr. Phil, if This I, is about me and her. This is not about me. They him. have <laughs> lied. Brittany says her mom has told her to cancel her wedding because she doesn't approve her fiance and doesn't want Susie there. Brittany says if she does go through with her wedding, her mom has told her she will video chat her during the ceremony and shoot herself in the head. That's a lie. That's a lie. Well, That's we'll a talk lie. about that after the break. That's a lie. I really don't like the laughing in the audience. They're laughing at me, not you. But I think you should put a stop to that. And later... It makes me sad how explosive she is. I mean, you can sit here and listen. The damage is done. You got that right. And all three of you are lying. Sometimes I just need my mom. I had taken my mother to lunch. I was extremely nervous. She said, we want to plan a wedding. I was like, okay, is Susie coming? She instantly goes into a rage, yelling at me in the restaurant. I left the restaurant, told her I would wait in the car. We argued about 15 minutes into our drive. We were already escalated in a fight. She just kept screaming at me. And I'm sitting there just really, my whole body's just ears ringing. In that moment, I almost kicked out her windshield. And we get to a red light. She jumped out of my car and cut across six lanes of traffic to a truck stop. That night when I got home, I got a text from her, did you make it home safe? Like nothing had ever happened. Such a lie. We had lunch that day. Can I tell you what happened? Well, Brittany says she would like her mother to attend her wedding, but Kristen says, unless I can convince her family to treat her better, there's no way she will attend. Brittany and I have just always been close. I was there when she picked out the wedding dress. I didn't invite my mom to pick out wedding dresses with me because it's hard to invite her to those kinds of things knowing how she really feels about me. I picked up champagne and a great sash and a crown for Brittany. The moment Brittany picked out the dress was breathtaking. There were a lot of emotions. She was so beautiful. Brittany didn't invite her mom because her mom ruins everything. My aunt has tried to step in as much as she can to try to feel a major void. My aunt has always been like my second mom. That is so sad that you've done that to me. Okay, you're, you're, you, you say that you're gonna just be made to look bad and not get any help and I, I asked you to watch the video because I wanted you to see kind of what was being said and what your life was like when you step back and look at it and you just talked through the whole thing. I know I listened to it it was all lies. You weren't listening you were talking I to did. them. I heard you but I promise you my nerves are so shot from what I've been through with these people but I promise you what they said is not true. Did you tell her you were going to video chat her during the ceremony and shoot yourself in the head? No, sir. I told her the day I caught her at my sister's on Thanksgiving, it crossed my mind to FaceTime her and shoot myself. That's how bad it hurt me. I never said I was going to do it. I never said it about this incident. That's where she got that from. It's been said multiple times. Let's just be real. That is not <laughs> it's true. It's been said multiple that times. That is not true. It is true. 
Is this going to be just a gang up session on me? Because I rode into this show because of them maliciously attacking me. And I have. I would would you like for me to put them in the audience? It's not going to change the fact that they're here. So I appreciate the offer. <laughs> I really don't like the laughing in the audience. That's like laughing at somebody la with mental no, health. No, they're laughing at me, not you. But I think you should put a stop to that. <laughs> well, that's not your job. I, I understand I, that, but I'm I don't so control messed these people. up here. No, they're and laughing, I have been through they're laughing so at me much. because I'm exasperated. My they're not laughing at you. They're laughing didn't at me. Even attend my brother's funeral. But they you, started no, attacking stay with me. me. Stay with me here. Uh, you, you said you want to talk about what they've done to you, so I, I gave you that opportunity to do that. And so you, you've told me that. They have made a list of the things that they say you've done to them. You said what they've done to you. They made a list of what they say you've done to them. And interestingly enough, you acknowledge a lot of it. Mm -hmm. You blame Teresa, your mother, for your brother's death. You admit that that you're verbally abusive, you admit that, that you force Brittany to choose sides within the family, you admit that, that you kick Brittany out of the house, you admit that, that you refused to go to the wedding and told her to cancel it, you, you admit that, that you called Brittany's work and got her fired. I called her work, I did not get her fired. Well, you told us you did. Can I say I something? I never got her fired. Mm -hmm. Actually, my mom called my job every single day when I, after I moved out, every single That's day. That's a lie, one time. Um, every single day, so much so that my office manager pulled me into her office, who also went to court with me <laughs> to prove that it was an issue. She never testified. Um, she went to court with me, and my office manager pulled me in and said, the doctors are now aware that there's an issue. I need you to look for a new job. So I did. My office manager was a beautiful person. She was very sweet. She said, I will not put on the separation notice that you were fired for other per companies' purposes, for me to get, get rehired somewhere else. Mm -hmm. She told a judge that she was fired under oath when she still had a job. That was not the truth. Right, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, I'm going to explain to you something that you really need to understand, and I'm hoping I can turn this boat and head it in a different direction. So we'll be right back. She's lying. How could she say she loves me? I never hear from her. I don't feel loved by them at all. I cry about it for days. I hate it. My mother did not come to my college graduation because she wanted me to tell my dad, my stepmom, and my fiance that they could not come. I refused. She destroyed my tickets that were set aside for her. My mom went into a fitting rage when she found out my Aunt Susie was at my college graduation. I printed her big canvas pictures of me in my college graduation gown and my sash and everything and made a big canvas for her. She destroyed it. She exited. She took a Just knife. Just cut it with a knife <laughs> and it. took a picture of it and sent it to her. Said, this is what you make me do. Let me ask you, Brittany, what is your goal? What, what do you hope for in terms of relationship with your mother? I would love a normal functioning relationship with my mom. Uh -huh. Sometimes I just miss her smell. Mm -hmm. It's sad though because there's so many things that are so hurtful and so hateful that it's like the damage is done. You got that right. You got that right. You know, the, the damage, damage is, is done, way done and and all three of you are So lying. many people feel that I'm crazy for still trying to make this relationship Same work. Here. I mean, it's it's very sad. It's very sad. It is very um, sad. It makes me sad how explosive she is. I mean, you can sit here and listen how explosive she is. Mm -hmm. I miss just being able to call her and talk to her about my day. My job's very stressful. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I just need my mom. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. not, you know, not blow my phone up and cuss me out because I've hurt your feelings or because I've done something to hurt you. Sometimes I don't even know that I've hurt you. I would like to talk about life and just normalcy. Mm -hmm. 
And what do, you, what do you hear when she says that? I hear lies. If she felt so, if she felt that way about me, then she wouldn't be sitting here agreeing with them on things she knows for sure is a lie. I, I just asked your daughter what she wanted, and she said she wanted her mother back. She wanted some normalcy back. Your response was to attack her. This is so not what I expected it to be. I'm not trying to attack her. What I'm saying is... I'm not is, saying you tried to attack her. I'm saying you did attack her. How did her. I attack her? Well, she said, I miss my mother. I miss being with her in a normal mother-daughter relationship. And you said, lies. It's just lies. All you're doing is lying. I don't believe it is what I'm saying. Let me change the word liar. I don't feel that way. I don't feel loved by them at all. What is your ownership in the breakdown of this relationship with your daughter? I, I despise my reactive uh, verbal responses. I despise it. I regret that immediately when I say horrible things to her. I regret that immediately. I cry about it for days. I hate it. But I'm so hurt because of what they've done to me. They took my daughter from me. I was a good mother. I loved her dearly. Do you think I know what I'm doing? I know exactly you know what you're doing. Okay, then listen to what I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you two things here. You're falling victim to something called outrageous overshadowing. When one person's behavior is so outrageous that it overshadows the behavior of the other, that's what you do. I exploded big time. Your reactions are so outrageous that if Susie's lying, if somebody's doing something, if somebody's manipulating, your reaction is so outrageous, they get a pass because everybody looks at the squeaky wheel and you are squeaking big time. Stop that behavior. And that's easier said than done. And we come back, I'm going to tell you how to do that. We'll be right back. I was diagnosed with PTSD five years ago. As a teenager and a child, I was sexually abused. My childhood abuser abused us horribly. I don't have any sympathy for Kristen. I don't believe Kristen has PTSD. There are times that she uses the PTSD as a crutch. My mother smokes pot every day to deal with PTSD. The only way I've found relief, isolating myself, and I smoke pot. It's almost like she wants to label herself with PTSD so that she has the license to mistreat people. Well, Kristen says that she has debilitating PTSD from her childhood trauma. Brittany and Susie say that Kristen uses PTSD as a crutch. Um, now, Kristen says that she fears that they're masterminding the master. Um, they are. <laughs> they are. No, he could be master. He, he can be by Susie, trust me. She's very manipulative. You have so very much manipulative. Faith in me. And why do you not like me? You lied to me and told me you loved me and want a relationship with me, but you've always been jealous of me because I'm more than you. She does. Read her text me. messages that she sent to me this three days after my nowhere. brother died. And she tells you, you're second best. No, actually, you're third best, because I'm first best, and our brother was second, and you're third best. She, has she puts on a good show. Pump your brakes and let him help us. You don't disrespect me. You've done that enough. And they are lying, and as long as you stand there and allow that, you couldn't possibly feel the way that you do about me and allow the people who have harmed me my whole life to sit here and lie, and you join them on live television and make me look to what they are? Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, my turn. My turn. Take a drink. So when you're drinking, I can talk. So. You know, this, I, I really... No, listen to me. No, listen to me. Listen to me. No, this is my turn. I say it's my turn. So I'm I, actually about no, to leave. Well, uh, no, no, no you're not. No offense to you. Listen to what I have to say. Then you can leave. Give me five minutes. Give me four minutes, okay? You came all this way. You might as well give me four minutes, right? I let you all go through all that because maybe it's cathartic. I hope it's for one last time. Here's what I think. 
Here's what I think. In fact, I tell you what, let me excuse the three of y'all. Okay. Okay? Because I want to talk to you without distraction. Okay, now it's just you and me. What these three don't understand, and really what you don't understand, is the gravity of the PTSD that I truly believe you do have, being sexually molested by a family member and no one stepping up to protect you. Those things leave very open wounds. It causes you to react to things and see the world as a hurtful place. Especially when you're constantly attacked. I, I went over the outrageous overshadowing. You do things that really hurt people. They do it to hurt me, and then I that react. Doesn't, that doesn't mean that your reaction doesn't hurt So I'm just back. supposed to be their poncho bag? No. Are you going to sit here and try and tell me you have not said and done things that have hurt your daughter? Absolutely, I've hurt my daughter. Okay, that's all I'm saying. So you get into a battle of react, reflex, 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 where you are hurting each other. And this is never going to change until somebody stops judging you and starts helping you. I want to send you to the PNP Center in Dallas, Texas. I want to send you to what I believe is the preeminent PTSD expert in the world. And I want to start out with a full diagnosis and, and do brain scans and look at you neurologically, look at you biochemically, hormonally, every possible way. And let's find out where we are. And then let's start putting some therapies together to help you heal the things that have happened to you in the past. And then I'm going to offer you the opportunity to give yourself a tremendous gift and go to a place that I have great confidence in called Onsite. And Onsite is a beautiful place in the hills of Tennessee. They're the worldwide leader in intensive workshops for people that have been through trauma. They and have I don't, lied so much. I, and you've said that. And but I don't know that you believe that. You acted like they were just telling you the truth. I don't, listen, I don't care about the details of what's going on here. I care about you having the opportunity to heal your relationship with your daughter. It's, I really... That's what I care about. I care about you finding peace within yourself and healing your relationship with your you daughter. And if you think I know what I'm doing, then you take this help and take this advice and let me lead you down that path. <laughs> uh, a special thanks to PMP Center and on site because I've talked to them and I've offered this help to Kristen, and you think that there's been some competition here and they've won. I don't know, it's a lie. It's I just think, humiliating I th further. It's I just think further you, humiliation. I think you are the winner here because you're coming out with some things that you really need that are going to help you immensely. All those lies All right. just went on public TV. I'm going to come out on top here. Next, is she being scammed by a Portuguese prince? Vivica A. Fox joins us to talk about one of the biggest catfish scams she has ever seen. You will not want to miss it. Well, you know her from unforgettable roles in Independence Day, Kill Bill, and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Vivica A. Fox has had major success on stage, television, and film as a producer, businesswoman, and now an author. She has triumphantly built an international brand that stands on the strength that women can do anything. And now she joins me in the daytime talk show world with an exciting and dynamic show called Face the Truth. <laughs> Face the Truth is produced by Stage 29, my son Jay's production company, and it bridges the gap between quality television and the exploitive voyeuristic television that I wish would go away. 
Uh, let's welcome the leader of the Truth Team, Vivica A. Fox. Hey there, darling. What's up? Oh, it's been a busy, busy week, my goodness. So but it's been awesome. For those that haven't seen it, tell us about Face the Truth. Well, Face the Truth is uh, our new talk show, executive produced by my boss here, Dr. Phil. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for this amazing new job that I'm yeah. absolutely loving. Well, anyway, uh, Face the Truth, it's, it's a panel-style talk show where I'm the hostess with the mostest, and I have a truth team. And right. the truth team consists of Ariva Martin, Dr. Judy Hode, uh, Rosie McCardle, and Judge Gary Mary. Yeah, and uh, what I love about my wonderful truth team is that we have our guests come on the show, and they come on the show to share some of their personal problems, and we give, it, give them, you know, um, prescriptive sentencing, and we do it straight up with uh, no chaser sometimes. So. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> well, on tomorrow's show, you'll meet Nicole and her mother, who has been dancing for dollars for years. Here's a little clip of what you have been missing on Face the Truth. Nicole, what was it like growing up for you with your mom? Yeah. So growing up, when my grandma, my grandma often watched me, and I would go to the strip club if my mom was running late at the end of her shift, my grandma would drop me off, bang the door, and I would sit in the strip club. Um, there was tons of men around me. I had to do dinners with customers all the time. I had to tell these men that I loved them, even though I didn't. Ooh. And that's what would happen. So, wow. And I agree. Terrible. See, and you know what? If I had a norm to watch Dr. Phil, because it's the only show that I watch now, and if I had a norm about that show back when I was younger, because I was 16 when I got pregnant, I was 17 when I had my daughter, I was young, I was inexperienced, I think I made okay, huge mistakes. But with that being said, I was 18 when I had a child, and I didn't make those mistakes. Well, you can find out tomorrow if the Truth Team is able to help this mother-daughter relationship, but this stuff starts getting real, right? And oh you're starting my to see gosh. about that. Yeah, we have a lot of parent-child conflict. Yeah, do you ever think you'd be doing this kind of thing? Who? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I've got some questions for you, okay? Okay, yeah, yeah. now look, since we've been doing Face the Truth, yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you, I've been crying my lashes off, okay? <laughs> How do you stay so cool? How do you stay so cool? I'm just cool. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Now, you know, I, to me, I'm problem solving all the time. So I spend, we are too. I spend half my time hearing what isn't said. Okay. So, I mean, if, I, if this person's talking, I'm often paying attention to what this person's doing, how they're reacting. I'm so task oriented at the time that I, maybe it kind of keeps me from getting so pulled into the, the situation. Okay, now what about dealing with difficult guest? Because they're, I'm, look, y'all, we, we've had some, are okay? There, are there any yeah. other kind? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, nobody, nobody you know has just ever, have patience with them, no, you Nobody know? has ever booked themselves to come on here and let me know how well things are going. <laughs> okay. Uh, just want somebody yeah. to let you know how well my life is going. On our, on, on Face the Truth, we've, we've got some fun ones. But, yeah. you know, we, we've had a couple of ones that were, very testy. Yeah, here's an example of one you had on mm -hmm. Monday's episode, which covers an issue that we see a lot right here on Dr. Phil. Unsuspecting women looking for love who end up getting what's called catfish. And that means people that take on a, a false identity and then reel them in. Take a look at this. After 57 years, I finally met the man of my dreams, and all I want to do is spend the rest of my life with him. He's a scammer. She is totally being scammed by him. What do you say to people that question whether or not Bobby's real? He's absolutely real. Really? There's no two ways about it. He is what makes you say is. that? Because I can feel it. You can feel it. We wanted to get to the bottom of this, so we hired a private investigator. What did you find during your investigation? There were some red flags that it may be involved in scam activity. How does that make you feel to hear, Lori? I still feel the way I feel. Yeah. Lori thought she had found herself a prince, y'all. And what we found out, unfortunately, for she was just, she was lonely. And she was just looking for love in all of the wrong places. And, you know, it's always heartbreaking to me to deliver the truth because you hate to tell them the truth because once it, it breaks their heart when they hear it, but you want to do it before they wind up 
totally broke and going to jail. And it's usually someone that's at the end of their work life. So everything they've worked so hard to save is gone in it's a flash. It's gone. It's just absolutely heartbreaking. We found out, because we had a private investigator for our show, that they have places that, that they're like towers yeah. where they all get together and they just keep blasting out these emails and they yeah. just catch people and you know they get them in this vicious cycle of earning their trust and then they go from earning their trust to then get into their bank accounts yeah. and I, I you just you know how they got caught in that yeah. web of deceit to me it was yeah, amazing very, to find out they're very very creative and yeah. uh, you know i am i am so proud of face the truth and i'm so proud of the job that you guys are doing because it's, you know, I think it's the highest and best use of television. When people can tune in and there's a takeaway for yes. them to say, all right, this is something I've learned that I can share, I can use myself, I can share with my family and friends. You know, you, you go home at the end of the day tired, but you know you've done a good thing. You touch people's lives. Yeah. So I'm proud of you guys. You're doing a great job. Thank you so much, Dr. All right. I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Vivica A. Fox, the host of Face the Truth. The show just looks great. For more information, visit facethetruthtv.com. And to watch, check your local listings. You are going to really like this. These, these guys have got it going on. We'll see you next time. <laughs> thanks. thanks. I'll talk to you